Hey there, and welcome back. Today, we're going to pick up where we left off last week and get this current user variable to update over time uh, with state changes in our app. And so if you didn't see last week's video, we basically ended up with this demo where we wrapped Firebase's on all state change callback with a promise so that we could use it to suspend our application. But in pulling the state out of this component into module scope here and using suspense to trigger a re-render, uh, we lost the ability to have our app update over time. So if I run sign out, we actually lose our session and uh, we don't see the app re-render, but if we refresh, we see that we no longer have a session. So that's exactly what we wanna fix today. Now, the easiest way uh, we could do this would be to bring back our use effect right here in our component. So we can run this on mount, grab the Firebase Observer, which will return. And right here, we want to update some state, which we can bring back with some use state. And we'll just call set current user to the Firebase user right here. Now, uh, because we have this current user state variable, uh, this variable is kind of misnamed. This is still going to suspend our component while the initial auth state is being fetched. So let's call this initial current user. And that means we won't get to this line until we have it, which means we can actually seed our state with that value. So if we save this and check our initial render, we still suspend. But now if we call sign out, our app is reactive again. So uh, this is pretty cool. And this definitely solves the problem. But I really liked where we ended up last week with kind of all of this Firebase observer code living out here in module scope. You know, it can be here in render in an effect, but it just makes the code a little bit harder to follow. We have to think through all the code paths here, what happens when this re-renders. So ideally, we'd be able to keep this out here in module scope as well. So how might we achieve this? Well, we can't call set current user out here again, because we don't have access to it right here. And uh, this is where uh, some of the state management libraries in the React ecosystem come in. Uh, you've probably heard of Redux, uh, more recently Recoil that came out of Facebook uh, was a library to popularize this. And uh, we even have newer versions that are even more slimmed down libraries like Zustand and Vault.io. And these give us APIs to create and update state right out here in module scope outside of render, and then give us a bridge that we can use to read from that changing state directly from our components. So uh, I'm gonna show you how I used Vault.io to solve this problem. It was the first time I used this library and I really like the API, so I wanna show you how it works. So we'll start by just creating a new state variable using the proxy method here from Vault.io. And this takes in an initial object, and we'll just define one property current user and start this out as null. Now we'll bring back uh, this observer. Let's move it below our state. And instead of calling set current user, all we need to do is set state.currentUser to our Firebase user. And now down in our home component, we can use snapshot, which also comes from Vault.io, and pass in our state. And this is going to return our state, which we can just grab the current user property from. So if we save all that, come back and sign out, we'll see uh, that our app is responsive again. And if we sign in, we'll see it update as well. Now I've still got throttling on here, but if we turn this off, you know, we'll see everything is reacting just like it should. The app updates as soon as Firebase has finished its uh, API calls here. So uh, this is a pretty awesome API right here, it just gives us this little proxy state and we just use JavaScript assignment to update those values. And uh, using this snapshot hook, our components are reactive to any changes we make even if they're out here in module scope. Now let's take a look at the initial render of this app. So uh, we're gonna see we're back to the original problem where we get a flash of a content where the current user is null since that's the initial value. And then once this callback runs one time, we actually get the user. So we want to get suspense back in here. Now up here, uh, we have this async function, which we don't need anymore, but we still have this promise that resolves once this callback runs the first time. So let's call this initial current user. This is a promise. 
and uh, check out what happens when we use this as the first value of our current user. Just like that, uh, our app is suspending again. And this is a really cool feature of Vaultio. If you try to access a property of your state that happens to be a promise, Vaultio is gonna go ahead and throw it. Uh, it can do that because of this proxy setup which is going to suspend our application. So uh, we see here, we're back to suspense world, but if we sign out, uh, we're still reacting to those state changes over time. So this is a pretty awesome little API here that makes this really easy. We've got the initial suspense and we've got the updates over time. And uh, yeah, I was pretty impressed with this API. Now, uh, my preference here would really be to consolidate these two on all state changed observers. You know, I really like the idea of just having one of these that does the work. Again, because this is interacting with library code, it's arguably the most confusing part of this file. So let's do a quick refactor here. I'm going to remove all of this code from the promise. And let's just create a new variable resolve, which uh, we can just set equal to the resolve function of this promise right here. So this is kind of just a little trick to give us the ability to call resolve somewhere out here uh, in this scope. So now down here in our callback, we can call resolve, save it, and we're back to right where we started. We've got the app suspending, and if we sign out, the app is reactive. So this is kind of my preference for how to do this. We only set up one observer for the lifetime of the application. We never unsubscribe. And really this is just resolving this promise the first time and updating this state value over time, and everything works great. Vaultio also makes it really easy to do derived state. So usually when I create these use auth hooks, I end up having something like a status derived property. This is just a plain old JavaScript getter. And in here, we can return some data based on the current value of our state. So we can look at this.currentUser, and this refers to uh, the current value of the state. And if this is an instance of promise, then we know we're fetching this initial current user because we haven't updated this yet. And so the status is gonna be unknown. Otherwise, if this.currentUser is null, then the status is gonna be unauthenticated. Otherwise, it'll be authenticated. And now if we were to grab the status right here and just return a p tag with the status in it, We'll see while it's suspending, uh, we see unknown and then it becomes authenticated. And again, this updates over time. So this is again, just a really neat way. It gives us a lot of flexibility here to create drive state that still updates, but is still this singleton module state. So uh, all these components are referencing the same thing. Okay, let's go back to current user. And again, this is gonna suspend because it's a promise. And uh, as a final step, you know, in a real app, I would likely extract this into a use auth hook. We can just return the entire snapshot that updates over time, grab the current user from use auth. Everything should work just the same. And so we can just copy all of this code, open our sidebar, create a new use auth hook, Go ahead and clean up these imports and we'll export default use auth. So now back in our index, we can actually delete all of this code, organize our imports and import the hook. So now we've got this nice use auth hook, returns the current user or the status and it's reactive. And uh, we've hidden all this complexity over here this is all running still in module scope, kind of the hard parts here. And this hook, you know, gives us a nice little point of abstraction. If we needed effects or react state, we can add it right here. We can add anything else we need related to react rendering right here. But uh, this snapshot is all gonna point to the same global state. It's kind of global singleton state that lives uh, in this module. And so it's nice just conceptually, it's all resolving to the same thing and um, we only have to set up this Firebase Observer one time right here. So this is a pretty awesome solution. And uh, now we have this hook we can use everywhere in our app.
Yeah, so I thought that was a really cool solution to this problem. I love these little state libraries. They're, they're all very well maintained right now. The ones from Poimanders and, and Recoil and, and Redux, all these things are kind of different flavors on the same problem space. Uh, but I think it's really valuable to get comfortable with promises uh, because it lets us suspend our app and uh, make these libraries play really nice together with this whole model of suspending uh, parents and uh, delegating those loading states straight up so that's what i came up with and want to share that with you let me know what you think about it in the comments thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one